Got it. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the very first <clears throat> edition of the Chaos Onboarding Welcome to Chaos Newcomer Experience um, Informational Session. So that's a really long title, but here we are. Oh, I'm Elizabeth. Sorry. <clears throat> I have something in my throat. I'm glad we're recording. Yeah. I'm Elizabeth. I'm the community manager here. So any questions you have at all at any time, hit me up on Slack. It's completely fine. I'm Elizabeth Barron. I will change my name here to reflect that actually. So you all know who I am. For those who don't know me, um, I've been in chaos a few years and um, yeah, I'm so happy to be here. I'm so happy to be sharing. Ruth Akia is also here, who is our community lead for Chaos Africa. Ruth, I'll let you introduce yourself real quick. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ruth Kega, and I'm the community lead for Chaos Africa. And I'm excited for our first um, monthly onboarding call. It will be recurring, so you can always catch the next one if you miss this one. That's a fact. Um, we will have some time at the end for any questions anyone has. Um, so feel free to ask those or you can jump in at any time. That's also that's also completely valid. Um, let me just make sure that I had the chat open here just in case so I don't miss anything. OK, great. Um, OK, so just to kick off, this is chaos and we this the word chaos stands for Community Health Analytics Open Source Software. In case you ever wondered what that stands for, that's what that is. Um, Chaos is an open source project, as you know. We are part of the Linux Foundation, and we are funded by a few different folks um, that help keep us going. Ford Foundation and Alfred P. Sloan Foundation, primarily. Um, and then Sustain, all, um, they are an open source project as well, and they um, support our podcast, our Chaos Cast podcast. Um, and then we are again a part of the Linux Foundation, so they provide a lot of support in terms of infrastructure and um, visibility and connections and and things like that. Legal help if we need have legal questions, branding, that kind of stuff. So um, they offer support in those ways. Uh, Chaos started because there was this need to figure out um, how sustainable and healthy the open source ecosystem really is. Um, a lot of people rely on open source projects, you know, um, pretty much every company probably at some on some level relies on some sort of open source software. And so um, it's a really big part of our digital infrastructure overall globally. Um, so because it is so crucial to the way things work and the way work gets done, um, it's important that we care about how healthy and sustainable open source projects are. Um, as an individual, you would want to know uh, where, you know, where is a safe place to contribute? Where, where can I go where I'm going to make an impact and that, that it's going to matter and that I'm going to feel welcome and, and like a part of the community? Um, and then open source communities, of course, want to be healthy and attract new members. They want to make sure that they're doing what they can to um, reduce risk and, um, you know, doing, uh, making sure that they are sustainable and that their communities are growing, their projects are healthy. Uh, open source companies who are running maybe an OSPO or an open source programs office want to know um, how their, their projects are doing? Are they healthy? Are they growing? Are they vibrant? And they also want to know um, if they're about to use some software, is this software that's going to be around for a while? Is this a healthy community? Um, is it something that we should participate in or, or rely on? And then, of course, um, open source foundations want to make sure that if they are promoting or funding or um, associating themselves with a, an open source project, that it is a healthy place to be because they don't want to be promoting and, and assisting um, toxic um, communities that aren't, aren't helpful to the, the overall ecosystem. So we really have these kind of four stakeholders, we call them, that um, care about open source health. So chaos comes together to help us figure out how to measure health and sustainability. And not only do we want to measure it, um, but we also want to improve transparency of, of open source health, like figure out, you know, what, what is it the things that matter? What things can we measure? 
and how do we do that? We also want to help educate maintainers on how they can get insights on their own communities and um, measure their own health and, and make things better for everyone involved. Um, and then, of course, contributors, we want to have healthier communities for contributors, um, especially if we are trying to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion. We want to make sure that newcomers to open source are, are giving their time and their energy and their efforts to a healthy community that, that cares about them and that where they can feel that they belong and make an impact. And then, of course, provide visibility for those four stakeholders that we mentioned before. So really, this is our this is what we do. We develop metrics. Um, methodologies and software. Those are the kind of the, the things that we're working on here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, chaos really has uh, this kind of two two pronged approach. So half of us are working on the actual software to measure things and to get that data. And then the other half of us are working on the metrics of what things can be measured, but they all do act as a partnership together. And of course, people are in both sides. <laughs> I say two sides, but really it's um, people are, are contributing to both parts. So it's not like you're one or the other, you can do anything here. I'd say there's different paths to contribution That's on the it. software yeah. side, yeah. Yep, perfect. So on the software side, we have our two main projects, which are Grimoire Lab and Augur. And Sean, who is on the call, is the um, kind of lead, leads the Augur <clears throat> project. That's I'm one of Augur's big. maintainers, yes. Yeah. So um, these, what these two projects do is, again, they, they figure out how to grab that data. So if we're measuring something like, um, I don't know, how many contributors did my project have from January to June of this year, for instance, then Augur and Grimoire Lab would be used to grab that data via an API from maybe GitHub or GitLab or wherever that project is um, is based wherever that con wherever, wherever that collaboration happens. And then on the metric side, um, we're really looking at all the different ways we can measure community health. So for instance, if you're a human being, then there are different ways you can measure your health. You can look at your weight, your blood pressure, your white blood count. Like there are a lot of ways to measure kind of what's going on with your body. Um, and you would look at that from different lenses. So um, you know, maybe uh, you would look at your blood pressure on, on one way. Um, and then if you're looking at it a different way, it, it, does that make sense? Like, so your blood pressure by itself can be good or bad, but if you're looking at it in, in conjunction with a few other things, then it, it might change the context of, of if it is good or bad. And same thing with your weight. Like sometimes you want your weight to go up, sometimes you want it to go down, depending on the context in which you're looking at it. So we have these working groups that look at community health from a variety of lenses. Um, risk is one of them. It looks at things like licensing and um, dependencies, um, because if your project is really, um, if it's you know high level risk, if it's if it's not healthy in that way, then that's not great. So you want to just give have some visibility in, in how how your project's doing on that in that way. Um, the next one is diversity, equity, inclusion, or DEI for short. And those look, uh, those metrics include things like how diverse is the leadership of our project? Um, are people, do they feel uh, welcome? Is there a clear path to contributing? Um, do, is there a code of conduct for the project? Things like that. The next group is our evolution working group, and that looks at the life cycle of a project. So uh, is the project growing? Are we getting more contributors than we had last year? Um, is there, how many downloads do we have of our project? Are we, is it popular? Is it, is it um, you know, are people using it more than they were before? Things like that. And the next one is our value group, which we're in the process of renaming to an OSPO working group or an open source programs office which um, happens in, that's, a, that's a, a team in a company or at a university that kind of runs the open source projects that the company owns. So Google, for instance, has an, an OSPO where you know, they have various of their own open source projects that are, they're running under. So that group is gonna look at things that are meaningful to, to this group of folks. And then finally, we have our common working group um, who they look at things that are uh, metrics that would be common to more than one group. 
So a little bit more high level things that can apply to various, various other groups. And then, as I mentioned before, you know, when you take a metric by itself, it might not be super meaningful. Like if you're just looking at your weight, it might not be that meaningful. But if you look at it in context of other things, then it, begin, it begins to paint a bigger picture of an overall health. So our metrics models group takes metrics from different working groups, kind of puts them together in a, in a broader sense to give you a little deeper of a look, a little bit more meaningful um, picture of what's happening. So for instance, a metric model might be um, welcomingness, for instance. So uh, you could look at things like um, clear path to leadership or clear, clear path to contributing, which would be in our DEI working group. You might also look at licensing. Is this a project that has a license that's uh, friendly to contributors? So that would be something from the risk working group uh, and things like that. So I'm gonna just stop real quick and see if there are questions from anybody. Because I know I'm through a lot out there. <laughs> so. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on then. So our working groups are basically teams that work on these different things that may work on, <clears throat> excuse me, that may work on Augur or Gamora Lab or um, some of our metrics. So we just kind of generically call these working groups. But really, they're just teams that are coming together to work on different things. Um, typically, they will be working to define some metrics in whatever category we mentioned before. Um, but we also have um, operational working groups, like a, a team of folks that work on our website, for instance, or that work on different design elements. Um, maybe documentation would be would be another one and we have a list that um, we're going to share in, in a little bit um, that will have a list of all the teams of where you know where you might find some some place to contribute so Ruth's going to go over all of that of how to contribute in a few minutes. And then we also have oops I jumped ahead, we also have these community initiatives which aim to kind of bring together software and metrics in a in a more visible way in a more uh, real world type of way. So one of these is our DEI event badging issue initiative and that aims to look at some of the DEI metrics we have and apply them to folks who are running open source events. So an event would apply for a badge and we will ask them a bunch of questions on things like family friendliness and diversity access tickets and codes of conduct and um, things like that. And so they would complete this application. We have a couple of reviewers that will look at the application and kind of verify that this event is doing what they claim they're doing to center DEI in that event. And then we will issue them a badge, which they can display on their um, website or in their GitHub repo if they have one, wherever they want to put it. Um, so that's another way that you could um, you could get involved too. That's a great a great initiative. Um, we also have a Slack bot that um, will welcome newcomers to the um, to the community, which you may have already used if you're in our newcomers channel and you type the word newbie you'll get a, a private message from our Slack bot where you can ask them questions. Um, we would love to build that out even further as well. And then we do have um, a metrics automated release system, which is our, um, we call it Mars, which helps us kind of package up our metrics that we've worked on and displays them in a really nice PDF and puts them all together for us. So those are just some other kind of initiatives that we have going on. Um, to, to help bring our metrics forward and to help us um, be more welcoming and inclusive ourselves as, as chaos, the community. Um, if you're not familiar, if you haven't seen the website, here's where you can find that. Um, it's in the process of being redesigned, so it will not look like this for long, <laughs> but that's what it looks like right now. Um, so yeah, keep your eyes open for that um, impending change. <laughs> I know we've had a lot of folks working on it as well. And here's our main repo. Uh, we do use GitHub um, to uh, to um, do a lot of our collaboration as well. Um, so that's where that you can find that. I feel like there was something else that I wanted to mention um, that I 
I don't see it here and I don't know why. Um, but I just wanted to clarify that we do call ourselves chaotics. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I put yeah, that. I put I that somewhere. Oh, there it is. One. <laughs> I was like, it's I know I wrote it. In my section. <laughs> Okay, well, I, um, that's pretty much about chaos. There's a lot going on. I totally get it. And so some of these things may not be super clear to you if you're a newcomer, but our aim is to try to clarify all of these different moving parts for you. So I'm going to let Ruth take it from here and um, let you, uh, she'll share how you can get involved in chaos. Okay, can you go to the next slide, um, Elizabeth? Okay, um, so... Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing about chaos. And yes, there are a lot of things we do at chaos, but you shouldn't get overwhelmed um, because like Elizabeth said, um, these things take time to understand and we are going to lead you through that. So the next question is how do you participate or how do you like get involved? Um, first, like Elizabeth said, we call ourselves chaotic. It's, um, I will say it's a band name in case we want to have a band <laughs> in the future. Uh, but yeah, so if you ever hear that um, word chaotic, that's like just the name we call ourselves. And if you are, in, I'm sure um, everyone here is on the Slack and that's how you found this meeting. But um, we have a Slack um, and in that Slack, there are like different channels um, that we use to communicate. And I think all the working groups do have like specific channels. So you can use the find I think there's this find button channel on Slack where you can find other channels if you're not in any um, other channel aside general and the newcomer one. We also have an active mailing list. Um, you can subscribe from the website. Um, I don't know if it is, but you can navigate to where the mailing list is on the participate page. I think it should be on the participate page. Yep, you can subscribe to the mailing list and we also have a newsletter. I think we didn't add that, but we, yes, exactly. So if you just click there, you can subscribe um, to the mailing list. And also we have a DEI working group mailing list mm -hmm. on chaos, chaos community slash participate. Um, also, we have weekly community calls. We have a lot of calls in chaos. <laughs> um, that should overwhelm you too. Um, on the participate page as well, we have a calendar where you can also get reminded of these calls. Um, so if you see the calendar here, we have the different meetings. Um, for Tuesdays, we have um the office hours for newcomers. Um, this is not really similar to this call in the office hours. What we do is we answer questions most of the time. It's just you come in, you ask your question. So that's what happens during the office hours. And we have also the chaos um, general meeting where all the working groups, all the um, community initiatives come together to, you know, have a meeting, have a sync. So that happens on Tuesdays. And on the other days, we have each of the working groups, they have their dedicated meetings. If you can see from like the calendar, you see the DEI working group has its own meeting. The, um, on Thursday, the web contents, web contents for the web team, the website team, we have the common metrics. So there are all these other meetings and even the, the local chapters we have here in Chaos, the Chaos Africa and Chaos Asia Pacific, they also have um, their different um, sync days which is thursday and i think for asia pacific let me see i think it happens on hmm. don't seem to find it yeah that should be on here i'm not sure what happened i will actually look into that okay um but i, I think it happened hmm I'm trying to remember the day it happens because I always get a reminder for that. <laughs> yeah, it's on Wednesdays, usually at, I think, okay. um, 8 a.m., maybe U.S. Central. Um, okay. I know they had a holiday this week, so there wasn't one, but it should be on there for the future. So I'll check into that. Okay. No worries. So we, we have this dedicated calls for the chapters as well. So, um, you know, you can add your, you can come here and when you click on the particular meeting you want to add to your calendar, you can just simply mm -hmm. click on that button. 
and it will sync. You can add it to your Google Calendar. Um, I think someone is I think someone is maybe want to mute the person for a while. I don't know if there was a question. Um, so also we have teams. Um, and these are like we have a spreadsheet, and this we put together this spreadsheet to help newcomers especially find um, ways they could participate. Like if you see um, for each of these teams, most of the teams here are working groups. So the week's working group, it has like a description of what that working group does and you know who the team lead or the, the people you can contact if you have like any question. Um, so you can scroll through, if you're a newcomer, you can scroll through this list, um, look at the overview and you know, look at the one that fits you, maybe fit your skill set or fits your, um, what you want to contribute to. Um, and then you can look at their contact names. You all, all have like the contact names. You can ask questions and also have like the examples of the type of contributions that you can make in these working groups. We are still building this spreadsheet up. So we'll add in the meeting times very soon. So you can always view this and, um, pick whatever team you want to participate in, reach out to the contact name there, and I'm definitely sure they're going to answer your questions. Um, okay, this is where you can go to the next. <laughs> um, and yeah, the mo another important thing is also making, um, doing your own homework, that's reading through our handbook. Currently, the handbook is in um, progress, um, but you can always check the, GitHub um, repo, the community repo for the updated version of the handbook. So if you go to the, I think you have to search it, Elizabeth. <laughs> yep. So uh, on, the, on the community repo, we have the handbook and we'll soon everything will soon be on the website. We are still doing a lot of work on it so everything will soon be on the website for but for the meantime you can check the github repo and you know read the handbook it gives you more more context on what um elizabeth and i have shared today so when you read the handbook you get you get more info there's more info about chaos about the different in depth about the different working groups and the different things they are working on so would really um encourage you to read the handbook and at any time, if you have questions or you have anything, maybe something you think you want to run through with us, you can always uh, message Elizabeth or myself, Ruth. Um, I think the next part is, so we also have like, we have been showing this page as well, the chaos community slash, slash participates. Um, we have like a whole lot of things here, the calendar, how you can join the mailing list, how you can pick a project, how you can, you know, um, check out. We also have like a podcast, the Chaos Cast, and that podcast is really there. Are a whole lot of topics around open source, and not just on things in chaos, but like a lot of topics around open source. I do listen to it most of the time, like during my free time, I just pop on one episode and listen to it. So a whole lot of things that you can get out of this podcast. We have up to 65 episodes. So there are a whole lot of things for you to do here. Um, also, we have the blog. We have the Chaos blog, um, which where we have like some articles and some information about Chaos. And if you scroll through you'd see like different blog posts and catch up with things that have happened in the community then we also have a weekly newsletter that i think it goes out every monday for me elizabeth does it go out every monday yep and it will go on the blog and um, it also through the mailing list. So if you're subscribed to the mailing list, you'll see it. I think there's also a notification in Slack with the direct link as well. Yeah, so. I think the, the Twitter, it's, it comes from the Twitter 
post. So this, you catch up on everything that happened in chaos in the last week. So you should definitely subscribe to our newsletter. Then we have a chaos YouTube channel. I think I missed that part, but all our meetings are being recorded. We keep records of every meeting that happens in chaos. You can see that it's one being recorded as well. So you can always catch up on different meetings that you missed on on the um, YouTube channel. You can, if you missed a meeting, I think it takes about a, some hours for it to get uploaded to the YouTube. And Elizabeth does an awesome job to remind um, folks on the channel that the meeting is up and you can go check it out. So um, if you missed any meeting at any time, don't worry, we have it covered. So you can always check it out on our YouTube um, channel. And also while you're there, you can subscribe as well. Um, and then I've talked about the Slack. So we do have the Slack workspace. And yeah, we encourage you to always like, if you are, you should join our um, community meetings or any working group you feel like participating in. Feel free to turn your cameras on um, and feel free to also flow in the conversation, ask questions, or if, you're, if you feel okay with using the chat, that's also fine. Um, we're happy that you joined us um, regardless. And We also have um, our Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, we have two Twitter channels. We have one for the Global Chaos Project. So that's at Chaos Project. And we have one for Chaos Africa. So if you're on Twitter, please, um, you can follow the Twitter handles because we do tweet out um, information. And even on the Chaos Africa um, Twitter, we, run, we also run Twitter Spaces Educative Twitter spaces or an open source topic. So yeah, do well to follow our social media handles. We do have a LinkedIn, but we are still in the process of getting that active. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, watch out for that. Um, so yeah, so I think that's um, all we have. Um, we'll take questions now. This is where we did a very good job with <laughs> explaining that new question. Excellent work. You know, it's so funny to okay, use yeah, I see a question. Else. Audrey has a question, so let, let's take Audrey's okay. question. Audrey, please go ahead. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. So um, hi everyone, my name is Audrey. Um, thank you for the presentation. It was really nice and informative. So my question is, um, how often do you, um, okay, I have a lot of questions and I just don't know how to put them together. But the first one I will go with is, um, I'm currently um, contributing to a project and I wanted to know how, um, it fits into the bigger picture. For instance, I have um, I'm working on a project which is called badging, if I remember well, yeah. And um, I just want to know how it fits into the whole picture. That is my first question. And the second question is, how often do you um, expect people to contribute to um, to make contributions to projects? And that's the two questions I have for now. Thank you. Okay, Elizabeth, do you want me to take the first one and then you take the second one? <laughs> Teamwork. Sure, sure. <laughs> that's right. That sounds good. To, if you, want, if you want to add something to the first one as well, you can. So um, for the first question, how um, the DI badging fits into the larger um, chaos project and um, thumbs up for to you, Audrey, for you know, you're already participating in one project. So thank you so much. Um, 
the DEI badging project um, came out of the DEI working group. So, um, Elizabeth, I don't know if you could share your screen again. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so we see that whole circle thing you did. <laughs> I think that is that a Venn diagram. I'm also bad in math. So I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so um, if you see this diagram, right, we have the working groups. And if you see like the working groups, there's the DI working group as, as one of the working groups. And then we have the community initiatives. And these initiatives came from um, the working groups. Now, the first one being DI um, event badging or DI badging um, is from the Chaos DI working group. So that project is in two phases. We one for the event badging. We badge open source um, conferences that you know um, ensure diverse and inclusive measures in their like conferences. And it goes through. We do a the peer review process. Like this is the repository for or the the org. The we have a GitHub org specifically for badging. It is meant to mess with the URL so much. <laughs> okay, so this is the org for um badging, and we have events badging where we have um events. So there's an open source conference. Think of any open source conference that you you know, say for example, the Linux um foundation, maybe the Linux Foundation conference, the OSSU summit. This is an example. So the applicants, um, the organizer or the applicants applies to chaos and says um hey i want a di badge for my event and they fill in an application which is on our website and the application gets um, submitted here as an issue right and we have a bot an awesome bot that assigns um human reviewers so it's not like the bot does the whole work so it assigns human reviewers to go through what the applicants have submitted and you know there's a checklist um, you can see the checklist down um, below so there's a checklist the reviewers use to cross check what the applicant has filled in and when the whole process is done the we initiate the bot a maintainer initiates the bot and it kind of like does the whole um summary and gets a badge so we have different badging levels right so um this project came from the like I said, it came from the DI working group as something in real life. Like, how do we implement our metrics in real life? Like, so this this whole checklist, um, the questions, every part of them, events, demographic, um, inclusive experience at events, they all came out from the DI working group metrics that we have. So this is like, um, yes, we have metrics in the DI working group. How do we implement this in the real life? And they will say, okay, great, we can, um start um the DEI badging initiative to um you know look at open source conferences and events um and you know um foster that um DEI spirit and also recognize them for their work. So I don't know if I answered your question um Audrey. That was a very good question by the way. Thank you. You you have answered it. Thank you. Great. Okay Elizabeth <laughs> the next one. As far as the um, the level of contributions, there there are no expectations. <laughs> like I mean, just to say, like it's whatever you can offer at the time because you know life is busy and you're not going to be able to you know contribute every single day. I mean that would be a, a lot. So whatever works for your schedule, whatever you're able to do is we are just happy to have any kind of contribution that you're willing to make. Um, so yeah, it's completely up to you and there are, there are no requirements or expectations on that level. All right, thank you. Yeah, I also see another, thank you, Audrey, for asking your question. I see um, Salami asked, is there a level of expertise required for us to jump on a project? I would say no, because um, you can jump in at any level you are from like we do have um, good first issues a lot of the time we do have like newcomers 
newcomers, we, we are trying to create that inclusive experience. So we have issues for newcomers to participate in. And if you check that, um, Elizabeth, could you go to the Teams again, the spreadsheet? Um, if you check through the spreadsheet, you'd see the different working groups and there are different ways you could participate. It could be through, um, you know, we do revise metrics some of the time and um, revising the metrics sometimes about grammatical changes, um, you know, some specific changes that, you know, would be communicated to you. So most of the time there are so many, there are so many things that even at your newcomer level or a beginner level you can work on. So I think, here it comes to indicate interest and you know reach out to um Elizabeth or Ruth, which is me, or the contact person on that team, and you know, ask around for like things that you could work on. And we are also trying to broaden this spreadsheet to kind of like explain more to things that people can work on. So we'll do, try to do that with each team, um, with the team um leads managing it so we try to get those things that newcomers you know issues that are um, newcomers or um any anyone can work on so yeah you can work summary is even though you're a beginner you can work on it you can work on some certain things rather so i mean i don't know if i answered your question Yeah, I think just to add on to what Ruth just said, it really is a matter of just kind of finding what interests you and, um, you know, joining that team, um, because I think every team has a variety of needs and a variety of things that can you can work on. Um, so it's kind of just finding what seems interesting to you, really. And, and if you join a team and you're like, yeah, I don't really connect with this, what they're working on completely fine like you can float around it's you know it's we're really super flexible super i would say relatively informal here um we do have a few formal things that we have to do um but for the most part it's just you know we're all trying to move this needle forward of helping open source health that's really what it comes down to so in whatever way you can participate and and help then then that's definitely valuable and we appreciate the contribution Yes, I see Salam. You said we answered our question. Yay. So um, do we have any more questions? Hi, Enoch. Yes, you joined at the right time. <laughs> I was just gonna say, Audrey, did that make sense to show? Oh wait, I'll go back here. Hang on a second. Um, that so here are the list of the metrics that we've developed. And so we developed this metric called, for instance, event demographics. And when we develop a metric, this is what the question we're trying to answer is, how well does the speaker line up for the event represent a diverse set of demographics and can it be improved in the future? So this was a document that we all worked on. Everyone in that DEI working group worked on to create this document together. And so now we have this thing, this way to measure this, answer this question. So um, when we go back over here to the badging, when someone fills out an application, well, lo and behold, here's this metric. Here's what we're asking them about. So that's how the bridge, that's how it bridges these theoretical documents that we've, we've come up with, ways to measure open source community health um, and put it into real life application. Like we really want to know f around family friendliness. How does enabling families to attend an event together support diversity, equity, and inclusion at the event? And so we asked them, we, we came up with this document um, to answer this question. And then we now will ask them in person, what are you doing to do family friendliness does the this is the question we would ask them does the event provide child care facilities what are other ways that the family friendly environments created at the event so really we're trying to help them also measure their their health in in the sense of an event in a, an event setting for an open source project so hopefully that makes sense of how that bridge happens
So for those who are working on this DEI badging, like we're going to have a new, so like right now, here's what the, the, the website looks like. This is it. <laughs> this is all we have. We, um, so for those of you who are working on the DEI badging initiative as in the form of branding or um, graphics or website, this is what you're improving because this is what they have now. So when someone comes, an event organizer comes to our site, this is what they see. And here's how they, how they apply. And so we're really trying to make that whole process a little bit better for them and for us as well. So the badging bot is also extremely helpful. Thank you, Enoch, for getting that um, to a level at which it is, which is amazing. Because a lot of this work was done manually before, and now it's a lot of it is automated for this whole process, which allows us to spend time reviewing the application because we do have two people that look at it and verify kind of, you know, yeah, this really is an event about open source technologies and blah, blah, blah. Um, so the, the badging bot has been extremely helpful to kind of take care of some of the, the administration of this and, and the process. Well, I think I have a question as a newcomer too. Oh, wow, <laughs> Enoch. <laughs> Enoch has been here. You have all the answers. I don't <laughs> for, for about seven months or more. So Enoch oh, yeah. is not the truth. <laughs> Enoch is no newcomer. No, 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 no. Uh, okay, I have a serious question. Um. And, and, and I think um, this is the right opportunity to ask such a question. And my question is about uh, the metrics. Um, I've not contributed to many metrics. And I think um, this question also would help um, the newcomers that are on the, que on, that are on the call here. Um, well, I, I, I think, um, and, and you should correct me if I'm wrong, um, is the process of um, starting, what is the process of um, <clears throat> starting a new metric? um is it like um a private member's bill that you're like hey i think i got an idea um let me craft up something and um show it up to you and see if it will make sense and then um do you assign that maybe to a particular working group and then um you assign it to particular people or it's up to whoever brought up the metric to gather data around it and then the only thing you do is make reviews about it and then, um, what are your <clears throat> what 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 are, what are the, the the project's um criteria into um validating a metric and um and putting it into I should say the vault or database of the available metrics. I'm happy to answer that, but Ruth, if you would rather, that's totally fine too. I think you should answer it. <laughs> Although I have like a, you should answer it. <laughs> okay, so there are a lot of pieces to that question. So I'll try to answer them one at a time. So the first part of what you are asking is how do you start a metric? Or if you have an idea, like what's that process? So I will share my screen again, if y'all don't mind. Okay, so in our so okay two things the first thing is we have a spreadsheet in which we keep all of our ideas all of our metrics that have been released and we keep track of where they are in the process like is someone working on it right now is it just an idea that we had or is it something that's been released so my advice might be to first check the spreadsheet to see if something has already kind of come up or if someone else is maybe working on it already um, and you might have to kind of guess where that would be based on what you think. So if it's, you know, some things are clear, some things maybe not. Um, but if it's something to do with, say, product life cycle or co-development activity, for instance, and you could look at the focus areas of the group to see if it fits in there. Um, we try to be pretty explicit in our naming of the metrics, but um, you can also just come to that group's meeting or jump in their Slack and say, hey, I have this idea for a metric. Does anybody know if it's <laughs> if it's being worked on right now, if you're not sure, and you don't wanna kind of dig into the spreadsheet because the spreadsheet is a little bit overwhelming, not gonna lie, it absolutely is. 
but it's right here if anybody wants to poke around in it. Um, and it's completely open to whoever. It's not like it's a secret thing that we have. It's just a little overwhelming for most <laughs> for most people. So that would be the first step is just to see if maybe somebody's working in, working on it already and that you could just kind of jump in to that conversation that's already happening. If it isn't, then um, you might come to that meeting and say, hey, I have this idea for a metric. Um, we have a template doc um, that you could start and it's in our community repo. Oh, which I already had open here. Um, I think it's under community resources. Yes, under templates, there is a metric, we call it metric template, and it looks like this. And so you would just copy this and put it into a Google Doc, because we found that a Google Doc is a little easier to collaborate on than GitHub for the, our purposes, for the purposes of this document. And a lot of people don't quite have GitHub skills, they may not even have a GitHub account. So, um, so we do most of the collaboration in Google Docs. So you would just copy this and put it in a new Google Doc. And you would maybe start putting some of these, filling in some of these blanks here. Um, what, what you think the description of the metric is, what, like kind of how you're, what you're thinking about when you think of your metric idea. And then um, you would just come to the meeting and bring it up to the group and say, hey, here's this idea for a new metric. Um, people would take a look at the doc, maybe take some time in the meeting itself to go through the, the doc and everybody collaborate. We would like pause the recording and just pause the meeting and take maybe 10 or 15 minutes and everybody jump in the doc at the same time and add their own kind of ideas. Sorry, they're mowing my lawn right here, right outside my window, it's kind of loud. Um, so yeah, and then from there, um, once everybody's had um, a, an opportunity to collaborate on it and it looks like it's in a pretty good shape, then we will open an issue in that working group. So for instance, um, that's not what I want. Uh, we just did this today in the um, DEI working group. Where is that? Let me find that one second. Hold on. Here it is. So we had this metric, which is um, newcomer experience, right? And so, sorry. So that was the metric that we were working on. And we got it to a point where everybody agreed that the doc looked pretty good. And then um, we opened this issue. You or somebody would open this issue um, which is like a quality checklist, we call it. So it's just like making sure all of these things are checked off before we put it on the website and send it over to get translated. So I know that's a lot of information, <laughs> Enoch, but does that help kind of um, verify? Oh, and Ruth is raising her hand, good. Yeah, so I just want to like um, share some bit of like a story of how I even participated in the metric. I think it was like the second or third month in chaos. Um, so like this is all like the metric, the process it goes through. But you know, when I came in as a newcomer, I didn't understand all these processes. Um, but I I did have like I at that time I was thinking about how there are so many things to do in open source, like there are so many things that you could do. You you can be here, you can be there, and all these things are interesting. And I was thinking about how do you manage the idea around my head then was how do you manage all these things together without breaking down? And that was just an idea I shared with the group at that time. And we, on the sports, we had, we created a, a metric, like a metric name, which was, uh, which is called Project Burnout Now. So we created that metric name that, that day that idea came up and you know, before sharing that idea, I was, I had like, I had, I had to pause. I said, does this make sense at all? Like, <laughs> before I eventually shared it, right? So um, regardless of how many processes it is better has explained, um, these metrics come out of ideas, like random ideas. And it's not that because you brought the idea, you're going to like, everybody dumps the work on you, like, you're going to work on this, right? But it's a 
if you join any working group call, you'd see the collaborative spirit behind each metric. Like we all work on the doc, like on the Google doc, we all put in comments, ideas, suggestions, you know, edit the metric, a whole lot of things. It's usually very interesting. So it's not just about, you must not have like the perfect name yet. It can just be an idea and you can share it with the group. And if it's a metric that ha has already been placed, in place that's fine we can always revise the metric because we do like um elizabeth said we do metric revisions so yeah that's one story i just wanted to share hope that helps you know i think that's a really great point and i should have mentioned this above all things is that all of our metrics start with a question so there's something we're trying to answer and that's that's kind of where the metric comes from and in ruth's case she was trying to answer this question and so that's that's the starting point for anything so yes you absolutely do not have to have anything else figured out um but just the idea of a question of something that could be measured and then as a group we can sort it all out together like it's yes 100 percent not on you to do it all to do all the work um it's it's a group effort for sure for sure i was also just thinking um that it might be a, a good idea and y'all can can say no that's that's also valid um but to maybe have some kind of graphic representation of like the steps of how a metric comes to be like maybe that would be something that the project designers would want to work on i don't know but i feel like that would be really helpful to just have this kind of visual like here are the steps here's how it here's how it gets born <laughs> i don't know what do you all think I think the website working group would help with that, but it's a good idea. Answers the question um, very easily and quickly. And, and well, my question has been well answered, I should say. Thanks for asking that. That was a really good question. Yeah, being a newcomer never ends. <laughs> yeah, great. So I think we are almost of the hour. Um, is, are there any more questions before we? This was really enlightening for me too, because I still learned a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, I was waiting for Sean to jump in to correct me on things that I got wrong. Because <laughs> Sean's been here since the beginning, but he didn't do that, so I'm glad. But it is kind of strange here, to like. <laughs> yeah, he just slipped out. Um, it is weird to work on someone else's slides, so or work from someone else's slides. So well, I hope okay, I was well, one slide. <laughs> We're looking for who had the slide. <laughs> we don't know whose slides they were, but I, they worked. So I guess. <laughs> I guess they got the job done. <laughs> you guys were using someone's slide that you don't know who the author was. Yeah, the the slide was pinned. The slide has been pinned on the on the I think on the general or one of the channel on the what I don't I don't remember where that where I saw that slide, but it's pinned on one of the channels. So I just <laughs> grabbed it. <laughs> I All was right. outdated, so we had to update a lot of things. It was very old. Good to also know that Ruth, after I was asking my question as a newcomer and you were laughing, you're also learning stuff from this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I learned this about no. girls every single day. <laughs> it's a one one. No, not not in your level, but I, okay, I'll, I'll agree that it's a one one situation. So um, I think thank you, um, Audrey, um, Salami, and Enoch for joining this um, monthly. Enoch, I think you're breaking up. Yeah, we're losing you, Enoch. So about this word, uh, this losing news, <laughs> I think it's used more in the medical <laughs> term. So it's like. <laughs> Every time I hear it, I think about something else. <laughs> <laughs>
you know maybe you have to join back yeah, yeah um yeah. yeah thank you audrey and salami thank for you. joining we really yeah. appreciate um, and asking questions as well we run this monthly so you can come by next month and join us again and to also be recorded it's also recorded so we'll share it and yeah bye everyone thank you.